Welcome to the channel. Today we're going to be covering the installation of Home Assistant onto a Synology NAS. Now if you don't know what a NAS is, it's a network attached storage device. So think of it as a specialized computer that's super efficient and that you can attach a lot of storage to. It's available 24 seven and connected to your network. Sounds like the perfect platform for your Home Assistant. And it is, but there are a few prerequisites and decisions we need to talk through before you embark on this installation. I'll take you through the prerequisites, put forward both sides of the debate for Docker versus virtual machine, then take you through my preferred method. So if you're just here for the installation, then use the timestamps to jump forward to the relevant section. So let's see if NAS is stand for NASA or for us mortals. The first prerequisite and the obvious one, you're going to need a NAS. Now I'm going to be using a Synology NAS, but any NAS that can either run virtual machine or Docker containers should do, but the installation instructions will vary. Next, you're going to need some connectivity for all those sensors and devices. Now sensor connectivity falls into a few different communication protocols. First is TCP, which can take the form of LAN or wireless. Since the NAS is connected directly to the LAN 24 seven, this is not an issue. Next is Zigbee or Z-Wave. Now they require a coordinator that is usually connected to a USB port on your hardware platform. So let's park this and we'll come back to it. Next is Bluetooth. Now this is by no means a must have communication protocol, but since we are covering communication protocols, we'll include it. So the simplest way for your NAS to gain these communication protocols outside of TCP IP is for your NAS to have free USB sockets or a single socket and a USB hub will also suffice. Then we can connect our Zigbee, Z-Wave or Bluetooth dongles to a USB port or a USB hub. This will solve all the problems and the simplest solution. However, if you want a more eloquent solution, why not use an SM Lite coordinator such as an SM Lite ZL06, link in the description. This amazing little device not only gives you Zigbee remote over your network, so no USB socket required, but also gives you Bluetooth. And if that wasn't enough, you can also get thread, but that's a whole different story. Link in the pop-up above. So now we have our prerequisites covered. We need to cover how we're going to install Home Assistant. When deciding whether to install Home Assistant on a Synology NAS using Docker or virtual machine, the choice depends on your needs, technical expertise and resource availability. So let's talk through the pros and cons of each and see which is best for you. The pros for the Docker installation are for resource efficiency, Docker uses fewer resources compared to VM, typically consuming only two to 5% of the CPU. You also get more flexibility, being able to destroy and recreate containers, making the whole process of creating temporary environments super simple for testing purposes. One of the biggest benefits is that it eliminates the need for any additional operating system layer making it faster and more efficient for systems with limited resources. You can also customize your setup, allowing for separate containers for add-ons like MQTT or Zigbee to MQTT, providing more granular control. But everything is not all perfect with Docker containers. It does have disadvantages. The Docker version of Home Assistant lacks supervisor, which automates updates and simplifies add-on management. This requires manual setup for updates and add-ons. USB support is virtually non-existent, making configuration for USB devices like Zigbee or Z-Wave dongles difficult and more complex. And although not the most complex solution you could face with Home Assistant, it is not as simple as most, and especially not as complex as the VM installation option. The Docker installation on Synology depends on the Docker packages from Synology, which might not always be the latest features or updates. And finally, configuring advanced features like MDNS for devices such as Chromecast or HomeKit might require extra effort when using Docker on Synology, as network isolation might block discovery protocols. Now, Virtual Machine is a whole operating system that is running on a host environment. But like Docker containers, it has its pros and cons. Firstly, the pros. A VM allows installation of the full Home Assistant operating system, including Supervisor which simplifies management of add-ons and updates. This makes it much easier to configure and manage ongoing. 
As this is the full Home Assistant OS running, it's ideal for beginners due to its integrated environments where everything is pre-configured and connected. Also, connecting USB devices is easier thanks to pass-through in a VM setup requiring no additional drivers. But similar to Docker, virtual machines have their own disadvantages. VMs require more resources, with a minimum of 1GB of RAM, but 2GB is preferable, and a higher CPU utilization compared to Docker. Therefore, depending upon your Synology NAS, if it has limited hardware resources, running a VM might strain the system. As to my recommendation, I would choose Docker if you prioritize resource efficiency, have technical expertise, or prefer a modular setup with separate containers. All up for VM if you are new to Home Assistant, want an easier setup with integrated add-ons, or require robust USB device support. For most users new to Home Assistant or those who value simplicity, installing it in VM is often recommended. However, advanced users or those with resource constraints might prefer Docker. So for this video, we'll be installing Home Assistant onto a Synology NAS using VM. If you'd like to see the Docker alternative to this, then let me know in the comments. Now I'll make the assumption that your Synology NAS is already configured and running. Log into your NAS with an administrator login. Press the four symbols in the top left hand corner. Search for Package Manager. While here, we'll add it to the desktop. Right click on the Package Manager and press Add to Desktop. This is similar to the App Store for your phone and is where all of the Synology approved applications are stored. This is the location where you can download the application that will run our Virtual Manager. Select the Package Manager. Search for Virtual Machine. Press Install. If you don't have replication service installed, you'll be asked if you wish to install it. As this is used for snapshot replication and is used for data protection, it's a wise move to have it installed. So press yes. Replication services and Virtual Machine Manager will both now install. Now, if you have never installed Virtual Machine Manager previously, it might ask which volume you wish to install onto. This will be very specific for your configuration of NAS. But if in doubt, install onto the main volume which in my case is volume one. And that's it for Virtual Machine Manager. Now let's configure Ready for Home Assistant. For Machine Manager, press Open. If this is your first time opening, you'll be dropped into the Setup Wizard. Press Start. Verify the host settings. Press Next. Select the volume where Virtual Machine Manager should load its virtual machines. Press Next. Confirm the installation has been successful with the green tick and press Finish. Now we have our host set up, we need to get our Home Assistant image to install the virtual machine. Next, we need to download the virtual machine image that we can use to install Home Assistant from. Navigate to the Home Assistant Alternative Installation Operating page, link in the description. There are several different versions available, but we need the .ova image. Select the VMware ESXi slash vSphere. This will download the .ova file. This is approximately 450 megabytes, so it will take some time. Navigate back to the Virtual Machine Manager on your Synology NAS. Select the Virtual Machines on the left-hand menu. Select the drop-down arrow next to the Create, and select Import. Leave the selection on Import from OVA file, and press Next. Select Upload a file from PC, and press Browse. Navigate and select your OVA file that you just downloaded and press Upload. Now press Next. The import is quick and should be done in under a minute. Select the storage you wish to use and press Next. For the configuration specifics, I would leave these alone, at least initially, and tune afterwards based on performance requirements. Press Next. For storage, it is recommended to leave at 32GB initially, but if you want to increase this at a later date, check out the video in the pop-up above. You can leave the network configuration as default virtual machine network. Press next. Change the auto start to yes. Change the firmware to UEFI. Change the keyboard layout if required. For the USB controller, it is recommended to use USB 3.0, but you can change this later if you have issues with your USB connections, as there are debates as to if USB 2.0 is a better option. Optionally select your USB device if already connected, otherwise you can add this later on. Press Next. Select which user to have power management permissions for. For this I'll select myself, but you can create a specific user for this task if required. Press Next. 
Verify the summary screen. If you are happy with the settings, press Done. Virtual Machine Manager will now create your virtual machine by importing the settings. Once imported, the virtual machine will show as powered off. To start your Home Assistant, select your virtual machine and press Power On. This will take a few minutes. Home Assistant will show Preparing. Once ready to access, the status will change to Running and you'll see an IP address that has been allocated by your DHCP server usually with a range starting 192 point or 10 point. Any address starting with 172 can be ignored as these are internal IP addresses. Open a new tab and navigate to the IP address that came up next to your Home Assistant virtual machine. Remembering to put a colon 8123 at the end. This should bring up the preparing Home Assistant screen. Now be patient, this can take some time. Once preparing is finished, you'll see the options for Create My Smart Home or Restore From Backup. I'll assume that this is a new installation. Press Create My Smart Home. Enter your name, which will be known inside of Home Assistant, a username, which will be used for login and entities, and a strong password, noting that Home Assistant does not enforce any limitations on password. Now press Create Account. Enter your home location, which will be used for location zone tracking purposes only from within Home Assistant. Optionally activate analytics and press next. Home Assistant will now interrogate your network for compatible devices. Although some will need additional configuration, press finish. You'll be dropped into the overview screen of Home Assistant ready for you to configure. Now this is not a Home Assistant new configuration video. So I'll just show you the add-on working plus a Zigbee coordinator attached, both of which are not easily achievable from a Docker installation and require a considerable amount more work to get working. Navigate to Settings, About. You can see that we have the core, supervisor and the operating system. Now let's go and use the add-on store. Navigate to Settings, Add-on store. Press the add-on store in the bottom right hand corner. To demonstrate that this is working, let's add the ESP Home Builder, which you'll probably need at some point in your Home Assistant journey. Search for ESP Home and select the ESP Home Builder. Press Install. Now select Show in Sidebar and press Start. Now select ESP Home Builder from the left hand menu. You will see the ESP Home Builder home page. This would not be possible from a Docker installation without a much more complex installation. Now you will probably be using a Zigbee to connect your sensors to your Home Assistant. If you decided to use the virtual machine of Home Assistant, this is super simple. Navigate back to your virtual machine manager on your NAS in the browser window. Navigate to the virtual machine manager in the left hand menu. Right click on the Home Assistant instance and select edit. Now this is the time to plug in your Zigbee coordinator. I'll be using an SM Lite SLZB07, link in the description if you want to pick one up. Select Others from the top menu. Use the drop down for the USB devices and your SM light should show up as a Silicon Labs CP210X. Select this. If this doesn't show up, then there is probably a driver issue. I'd suggest watching the video from Easy As. This takes you through the process of adding the appropriate driver. Link in the pop up above. Now press OK. Switch back to Home Assistant. Navigate to Settings, System, followed by Hardware, and press All Hardware. You should see your Zigbee coordinator connected through TTY USB 0 or the equivalent. Therefore, it's available for use. Now let's quickly test this out. Navigate to Settings, Devices and Services. Search for ZHA. The SMI coordinator should now show up and can be added to ZHA. Press Add. Confirm you wish to add the SMI coordinator by pressing Submit. Press Erase Network Settings and create a new network if this is the first time of use. Home Assistant will initialize the Zigbee radio ready for you. Optionally give it an area and press Finish. You will see the ZHA coordinator is now ready for pairing. I think you agree that the installation of Home Assistant onto a Synology NAS using virtual machines is pretty simple. It provides excellent support as it's Home Assistant OS so you don't get bogged down into hardware and platform issues and instead focus on Home Assistant configuration and automations. The only real caveat is that you need to factor in the demands you're placing onto your Synology NAS 
and make sure that it doesn't negatively impact the performance of either Home Assistant or other applications that your NAS is running. I ran this configuration for many years with no issues. The only reason I moved to a dedicated server was the need for more flexibility and multiple environments for this channel. Otherwise, I'd probably still be running on my NAS. Now, if you've watched this video and still want to go down the path of Docker containers, then let me know in the comments and I'll create a video specially for you. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video and if you did, then hit that like button, comment and share. And if you want to have access to similar material, then subscribe or maybe become a channel member and get early access to similar material plus other perks. And if I've helped you configure Home Assistant on your NAS, then maybe a super thanks or a PayPal donation. It's really appreciated.